This is about Jackson's structured design. Structured design is a behavioral design which starts at the broad designs at the top and successively refines the designs so that they are quite detailed at the bottom. Any method that goes from the top down can also proceed from the bottom up, although with due attention to the weaknesses of each approach. Here is an example of a hierarchical top-down design for a student management system. At the top level, we have the box Manage Students. The design for this breaks down into five steps. Admit students, student acceptance, sign up for classes, process finances, and student arrival. In general, we proceed through these steps left to right. Each of these steps involves more details. We'll look at the next level down, sign up for classes. Signing up for classes involves first logging in, selecting the classes, ensuring that the classes are compatible with each other and that they're valid for a degree or for initial studies, and that all the prerequisites for the classes are met. Then there is a scheduling process where the student may select among classes that are offered at multiple times. Finally, a schedule is printed. The boxes with the asterisk in the upper right-hand corner denote tasks that may be done iteratively. The last step is to print the schedule. Although there are options for doing so, selecting among options denoted by the small circle in the upper right hand corner of the box. You can think of these circles as radio buttons on a screen where you select one of several options. This kind of design offers a specific perspective of the system. It shows what is to be done and roughly an order in which things are done. This is a behavioral or functional model. It shows what has to be done but not exactly how to do it. Importantly, however, it allows decomposition. It allows moving from a very broad view of the project through successive levels of detail where implementation, finally to a level where implementation is addressed. On a very large project, a number of years ago, maybe 15, I wrote a web-based tool which would portray such a hierarchical design. There were at most five levels of detail. The words which appeared in the boxes were defined in a glossary and they constituted a domain-specific language. This system linked requirements and design together so that it was clear that all requirements appeared in the design and that there was not a design for something that wasn't in the requirements. Being a passionate programmer, I am often in favor of writing one's own tools because they can be made to fit the project exactly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, top-down design, as we proceeded in the previous example, can also be done from the bottom up. Here we might list all the things that we think we need to do to make a student management system, then group them into higher level structures. We could think of all the things a student might do in a day. Arrive at school, go to class, check homework that's due, submit homework, go to the cafeteria, eat lunch, uh, schedule a time to talk with a professor, actually go and talk to that professor, meet other students in the computer hacking club, for example. Um, ride the shuttle bus back to the outlying student parking area where you parked in the first place and go home. These and other activities could have some automation associated with them. Going from the bottom up might cause us to remember important tasks like scheduling time with a professor that you might miss going from the top down. Of course, the top-down approach would ensure that you've got a good broad view of the project from the beginning, even if you might be missing some of the details. The big takeaway from this lesson 
is the value of structured design, however you choose to represent it. Next time, we'll talk about a functional and hierarchical design technique called the data flow diagram.